water for you. <laughs> Miss Teresa, you want the water? No, thanks. You probably want to pick some. Some of them are cold. <laughs> Thank you. you don't want to sleep today, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, because I don't, I'm not a good sleeper anyway. Yeah. Okay, live streams up. Listen on Facebook. I've got six o'clock, so I will go ahead and call to order the uh, Wednesday, October 7th meeting of the Darling Community School District Board of Education. Teresa, do you acknowledge public notice? Yes. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Okay. Mr. Jackson is here. Aaron Lancaster, you on Zoom? Yes. Mari. Bronco. Christ, Hermanson. Here. Reichling. Here. Rickers. Here. Stilling. Siegenthaler here. Wolf. Here. Zuberbuehler. Here. I think Joe was there, wasn't he? Or not? I haven't seen him. Oh. No. Okay, item three is called for special appearance. Is there anyone present, or have we heard from anyone that would like to address the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on then for item four, adoption of the agenda. Second. Second. Uh, Bob, you made that motion? Yes. Motion by Hermanson, second by Zubabiller to adopt the agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item five is approval of minutes from our regular meeting on the 21st and emergency meetings on the September 28th and October 5th. Second. Motion by Rickers, second by Reichling to approve those minutes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposed? The motion passes. Item six is the treasurer's report. You see that attached in board book. Any questions or comments on the treasurer's report? Seeing none, we'll move on to item seven, discussion and action regarding donations. 7A, the SIG Foundation would like to donate $1,000 to the DEM Service Learning Student Activity Account in support of Rosie Bags. Motion to approve and thank them. Second. Motion by Reichling, second by Rickers to approve that donation with our thanks. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 7B, we go strong, would like to donate $1,500 to the high school homecoming activities. Motion to approve and thank them. Second. second. Motion by Reichling, second by Sigenthaler to approve that donation with our thanks. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item eight, COVID update and discussion. First thing would be, Ms. Nellwolf was very nervous about the musical this year, being sometimes the school has been in person and, and virtual going back and forth. And with the musical obviously involving singing, which is a, you know, a very questionable activity these days. She has made the decision to move forward with an all virtual musical. All practices, all uh, performances, everything, the kids will be at their home on a Zoom meeting. She's already ordered the uh, 
script or is it from, it's called Emma, a pop musical. Uh, they've already had the casting and the kids are excited about it, getting ready to get started practicing. The presentation, the performance is gonna be at the normal time around Thanksgiving. And the way I understand it, it's gonna be all virtual too. We won't, nobody will be in the auditorium looking at it. You'll have to maybe purchase a ticket and with the ticket, you'll get a code or something to type into Zoom and you can watch it um, as the kids do it. So that's the plan. It's not gonna be exactly the same as we're used to, but I'm glad that they're getting an opportunity to do something. So mm -hmm. thanks to Ms. Melville for all her hard work putting that together. Uh, volleyball was supposed to play, I think yesterday and tomorrow. Uh, with all the COVID stuff going on, we're going to play it only once this week, which is tomorrow against basketball. That's here. So volleyball tomorrow here. Aaron and Lori and I met this week and we were talking about uh, just everything that's going on with the in-person and then virtual. And we talked about the possibility of a hybrid approach, especially at 912, where some of the kids would come, uh, half the kids one day, half the kids the other day. And I, if I remember right, Colleen brought this up last Monday at the meeting, and I don't remember exactly what I said, but it kind of sounded like I wasn't in favor of it. But now that I thought about it, we talked about it, and now that it's my idea, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm warming up to it more. So, I'm not saying that we're ready to start that uh, at any certain time, but we did talk about it. And as a district, if we ever came to the conclusion that it would be a good idea, we do kind of have a plan that we could put in place. And I think the criteria that we would need to use to decide that is that we all want the kids to be in the building as much as possible learning. And what happened at the start of the year, we made it about five weeks and then we were off to and if I knew for sure that that trend was going to continue all year, five weeks on and two virtual, I would take that right now the way everything is. And with hybrid, the kids are in the building only half the time, you know, every other day. So we have to kind of decide if we think this five on and two off is likely to continue. There's no way to know. But if we then that would lead us one direction, probably stay what we're doing. But if we think it's going to get to the point of one week on and two off for the whole week, we've got hybrid where at least they get 50% of the time in the building because with the hybrid, you're less time in the building, 50% or less, but you're almost guaranteed to get at least that much in. I don't think you would ever have to have a cold year because with only half the kids there, they could all be six feet apart. And anytime a kid tested positive, only that kid should, in theory, have to, to go. And so you would never have, hopefully, a mass closing anymore. I'm interested more because that now. Well, company. yeah, we when do. When they come back. Yeah, that's what we could talk about. And to me, if, if we think that we're going to go another five weeks and then two off, then we shouldn't do it. But if we think we're probably going to get one week in and have to go again, then we should. And I don't know, Mr. Lancaster's on here. It's kind of your thing. What do you think of this? I think, uh, you know, I talked to some of our staff and, and things like that. I think obviously we want to see them in the building as much as we possibly can. Um, I would agree with you if, if we think we can get five weeks in and then a two week virtual stint kind of throughout the year, I would, I would say, let's do what we're doing. Um, but I do feel comfortable um, knowing that I think we could go to hybrid, you know, pretty quickly if we ever really had to. Um, and I think the plan uh, would be just to break each of the four classes in half um, and bring half of them in. That way for your freshman core classes and, and those types of things, you're only, in theory, only going to have about half your classes in there. Um, so you'd be able to easily social distance um, I would say probably 95% of your courses, depending on who's in each course and things like that. So, um, you know, but I, I kind of look at the whole thing of if we haven't had any of the spread within the school yet, you know, I'm also looking at that. Um, 
I still like that five day a week as much as we possibly can. But I do understand that I think at some point we are going to have to strongly consider the hybrid um, to make it work uh, a little bit better for social distancing, especially if we start to see some of the spread within the school. Yeah, that would be a factor. So far, we haven't seen spread within the high school. There was potentially some of that in the DEM building, but in the high school, the, none of the cases appear to be connected yet. So that would be a factor too. At, when we were talking about this, we felt like that would be a, a real good fit for grades nine through 12, not so much for K-8. The more we talked about that, well, you can talk about this too, but uh, we kind of felt like uh, it worked better at the high school and having the kindergartners and those go back and forth every other day would be a lot more challenging for the whole mm -hmm. community, for everybody involved with it. So hybrid at the high school would be, each group would be two days on and then three days at home? Correct. So that, that fifth day would just be an all virtual day for everybody? That would be the Wednesday for cleaning in between the two groups. Yeah. Yep. And would that fifth day be like asynchronous where there wouldn't be like a schedule that kids are on to like attend Zoom classes or would it be, there would still be like Zoom classes going on at certain times? My thought would be to run our normal Friday schedule. And that way they're still having some classes but then the teachers are still getting the curriculum time that they normally would get on Friday. So in my mind, I'm, I'm seeing the same group of kids coming in on Monday, Tuesday. So half of them Wednesday would be that Friday schedule virtually. And then uh, Thursday, Friday would be the other half of the kids. So there's, so the kids are there two days in a row um, to have a little bit of consistency, even though they would be, um, seeing different teachers because we are on that block schedule. So that would be the picture in my mind right now. So then Aaron, the kids that were on, the kids that would be on virtual on those off days, are they logging into those classes or how, how's that work then? Yeah, that's what I would, it would be just like the kids that we have virtual uh, who chose to go virtual. Okay. Um, so we'd kind of have a, you know, in theory, again, a 50, 50 split of in face, versus virtual. Um, it's definitely not going to be optimal for our teachers. It's going to be a lot of work for our teachers. Um, but like I said, most of them, I think, understand that. Um, they also realize that the more we can social distance and things like that, the more we're, I think, potentially going to keep them in the building. Um, you know, I really would like to see the five day a week as long as we can, but I, I am very, uh, very much aware that that's going to probably be difficult for for long periods of time moving forward. I wouldn't be opposed to other formats either. I mean, I don't think there's one school doing it the same from all the research I've done, but one that I've seen that seems to be pretty successful is the classes where in person is really important, such as like a chem lab or a biology lab, um, anything that really could be hands on, they're making sure those kids are coming in. And then anything that's a lecture is sometimes being split or sometimes everybody's virtual, you know. Um, I don't think I don't think we have to make it difficult, but I also think that it's important to keep everybody safe and to keep our buildings as optional as possible, operational as possible. Um, and I've seen a lot where like if somebody's getting a C plus or below, no matter what, they have to come to school. They can't learn virtually. So there's options like that too. Um, so, in, I mean, I also think that if you sent, if you contacted parents and said, if your kid could be virtual, except for your, their hands-on classes, such as the lab, is that something you're interested in? Maybe we don't have to do everybody. Maybe we would have enough there that our class sizes are a little bit smaller, allowing for that safe distance too. So it, it doesn't have to, you know, it can be a lot of different ways, but um, 
I know some kids probably learn better in person and some probably do better virtually. And if we can accommodate that, just an idea. So Aaron, are you thinking when we come back the 19th, your preference would be to, to be in person or I, I guess I, I didn't understand or I think at this point it would be since we haven't really traced any spread within the school at this point. Um, I think once that happens and I think we have to do something different, but um, I mean, I'm open to, to either way. Uh, I worry a little bit about only bringing in the hands on the labs because we would have we would have quite a few kids that would be fully virtual at that point then because uh, they may not be in chem or physics or, or bio or um, those types of things, you know, you know, we'd have to kind of determine which classes that would be um, if we were going to look at that route. So I'd have to talk to the teacher a little bit about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, but I think most of my teachers would say uh, very few are teaching lecture, fully lecture-based courses. Um, a lot of our classes are very interactive, even virtually. They've got them in uh, one of the features on Zoom are these uh, small groups that they can put them in so they can actually be in little groups of three or four and they can have their, their group discussions and things like that that they've been taking advantage of, I know, this week as well. Um, so... I mean, I'm definitely open to hear other ideas, you know, as far as the, the virtual piece or excuse me, there's a hybrid piece, but, you know, again, you know, I don't think there's any argument that kids learn better in, in person, um, but that's going to be tough to do, I think, in, in its entirety throughout the year. I guess my, my think, and this is just my opinion, I'm kind of bouncing it through my head. I guess I, the only argument that I would make about going virtual or reason to not or reason to start out hybrid, I'm sorry, not virtual coming out of this would be just, I know we haven't had any spread in the high school, but I guess thinking that where our state's numbers are right now and us all over plastered all over the news or where the, you know, basically the hot zone of the U S we're putting up a, a reserve hospital in uh, Waukesha right now, I guess that would be my reason for, Hey, maybe, we should look at the hybrid model coming out of this for a couple of weeks until our state is under a better handle and then move into the back into what we, you know, our original face to face um, just to see what would happen. So yeah, and I'm not uh, against that at all. I mean, I think that's the route we think we should be going. Uh, I totally get that. Um, we just need to come up with the plan of how, how we want our hybrid to look. Yeah. You know, there's, there's dozens of different ways you can make our hybrid look. Um, you know, I'd like it to have to a point where I thought we could have as many kids in the building safely and socially distanced as possible. Um, otherwise, I think then we start having that debate of why aren't we just fully virtually or fully virtual. Um, and, and I don't think anybody, including my teachers, want to go there at this point. Oh. My reason, I think, for maybe going um, hybrid on the 19th is just to maybe a little way from what Nick has said, but maybe just to kind of work the bugs out, kind of see what works and doesn't work in case it has to be a long-term model down the road. If you do it for a week and then go, go in person the following week, at least you'd have a better understanding of what works and doesn't work. I understand the Wednesday for cleaning in between the students. I get that. I guess I question how many families that's going to affect. So at the high school level, they don't need babysitters. But at a K-8 level, you're probably talking K-4 maybe needs daycare still or somebody to monitor them, maybe K-3. And so changing that to a full day on Friday, right? because they would have their half day Wednesday. Seems like a really big inconvenience for the benefit of four grades to a lot of families. Now I'm not saying that Lee and his team need to work extra hard to disinfect. I, I'm just, I think we should all be cautious 
thinking about that. And, um, you know, if we're not going to put everybody hybrid, that I would envision that's going to be a little bit of an issue for people to move daycare from Friday to Wednesday or their time off or their work schedules, whatever it is. Well, that's a good point, and maybe Lee could speak to that. I mean, does it? Yeah, it oh, sorry. Is having that Wednesday a huge advantage for cleaning versus having Friday be the day that there aren't kids in the well, building? What you guys are saying is you're going to have the kids Monday, Tuesday, and have the kids Thursday, Friday. I think that's a terrific idea. I think that's what we need to do. Um, and I'm going to talk about it later. But what the cleaners are able to do right now, and the effort they're putting in, I think that's a good idea, and it'd be the best bet for us to stay open. Well, is that am I right? You guys talking half Monday, Tuesday, half Thursday, Friday? Yeah. Right, but the other option would be half Monday, Tuesday, half Wednesday, Thursday, no kids Friday. So what? how does that affect your cleaning? The rooms are still cleaned every night. The desks are still wiped off. The handles, every high-touch area, uh, including teacher workspaces, are cleaned every night. If you had that break, though, we could really, I mean, you could really have a clean break between the two groups of kids, and we could really disinfect everything you know, go a little farther, you know, do, do other things that we maybe don't get to every night. I don't know what it's worth. My two cents, I, can, I think the Wednesday makes sense to me, but that's just the cleaning aspect. That's not curriculum by any means. We could have it be Wednesday at 912 and be Friday for K-8 if we did something at the K-8. I think keeping it the same day might be helpful for families that have one kid in in high school and one kid at elementary. Our families that need a high school to babysit. Right. They're watching their younger siblings. If we if we move to that type of uh, a schedule, I guess I would like to see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then then um, no no instruction Friday, just to try it and 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 go from there. If, if we went to that model. Oh, uh, you mean no instruction or virtual instruction on Friday? Uh, either virtual or, or, no, or no, no instruction at all Friday to give staff time to, you know, do the things that they need to do. I mean, um, there's been, you know, some of the staff talk, they, they need some additional time and stuff. So, so I mean, I, I'm open to anything, so. Yeah, and you know we had that climate meeting, and that's further on the agenda, so we'll get to that too. But so that day, that fifth day, the kids aren't here. I mean, I think we could be more flexible with that. I don't think that would have to be synchronous, same schedule as every other day. It could be a review day, a practice day, a day where teachers could zoom one on one with kids that need it or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what's better there, but I could see that as being more useful for teachers. It might affect how they're teaching the other four days because they may want to get more content in then if that one day is just practice and review and, and time to give feedback to students. I think we really need to ask our teachers what they need as far as, you know, the an all day of virtual or an all day of like you said, doing what whatever they need to do, lesson plans or checking in one on one or well, I think in my if you're talking my building, I think they need more time to work on their own stuff. What we really saw the like the week or so before we went virtual was that we had we had a lot of kids either going home sick because you have to follow the health director's recommendations if you have the symptoms and you go home and you're home for 10 days or or we had kids all of a sudden that were in quarantine. So we have teachers teaching kids in the room. Okay, now these two kids maybe are out for 10 days. So we had a plan, how are we gonna teach them for 10 days or 14 days? It's just constantly changing. And that was really stressful for the teachers. So I think having a day to just kind of have that all ready. Okay, so if I have any kids go virtual, this is what it's gonna look like for them. Um, and don't you think, though, Lori, that's only K-4 that is having their virtual kids online for K-12 education? Because our 5-8 teachers are already teaching virtual and in person every single day, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, so what you're speaking of is only the K-4 teachers that aren't teaching virtually and in person at the same time every day. Right? Yes. Because... 
there are other kids that are doing the K-12 program, that's already being handled. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was those kids that all of a sudden were just trying to figure out, okay, what's this gonna look like? Maybe they're a third grader, so they are trying to log into their classes and um I think now that I say that, um I misspoke on the fourth grade because the, the one fourth grade teacher that was here is doing it virtually and in person, I think. Mrs. Well, McCarville. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's very stressful. Sure. I mean, it's a lot of yeah. It's a lot of preparation and you know, trying to teach 19 kids in the room and one online and meet the needs of everybody is tough. The only thing I'll say, guys, is the Wednesday thing is the advantage we have on Wednesday is, is that it's church night, so everybody's out of the building by six as far as kids. That'll give us a better opportunity to do more cleaning. Whereas Friday, which whatever, you know, where Friday you could have a sporting event or an extracurricular and people are in the building till seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, and it's really hard to, I mean, we'll be clean, but it's really hard to guarantee that everything got touched and, and cleaned, you know, it wasn't touched again. So that's the only thing that I see to a Wednesday. But like I said, I'm looking at it from a cleaning perspective, not a curriculum perspective. But either way, you'll have more time to clean for, compared to right now. Right. Well, correct. You'll have another day. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm just thinking the best way that we could guarantee a good sanitation. I like the idea of a Wednesday because you can clean good on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. You know what I mean? You've got a couple extra days, but I just I think that will be hard if I don't know. You're affecting two days because you're changing yeah. Friday to a full day. Yeah. And you're taking one you know, Wednesday's a day when they're yeah. home. If we were going to take one day to give teachers to prepare for the virtual stuff and extra cleaning, people are used to right now Friday being a half day and having to figure out something already for Friday afternoon. So if we made Friday the day off, it wouldn't be as big of an adjustment. So Wednesday seems like it'd be better for cleaning. Friday might be more convenient for families. I guess the administrators can talk to their staff and see and then talk to Lee and I'll support whatever. I just want everybody safe. So Yeah, so we can't act any, on this agenda item anyhow. And did you have anything else to add, Kale? It's not no. COVID stuff. No. So let's go on to uh, item five, item four, excuse me, discussion and action. No, item nine, discussion and action regarding teacher curriculum pay. For the teacher curriculum pay this year, we're proposing that they have three uh, objectives they have to meet. Number one, create an SLO and PPG in their educator effectiveness system. These are their goals for the year that they have to enter for themselves. Number two is to continue to familiarize themselves with plan book. It's a new online curriculum management system. And number three, this is the big one, is to prepare all your classes to be virtual. That way we felt like as far as one major goal for the year, that was already gonna be more than enough to, for them to take on. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Reckling, second by Hermanson to approve the teacher curriculum pay as presented. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. So, I, I question, guys, I just want to kind of backtrack on where I know we weren't going to take any action on on October 19th or whatever. So are we, do we have a meeting prior to October 19th? No, but the next agenda item, we could take action. Okay. So item, item 10 is discussion action regarding a climate committee report. Okay. Well, first we, oh, go ahead. Do we need action for administration to decide they wanna go hybrid or can we just say they can decide that? Uh, I really don't want to decide on that without teachers and staff having input on what they think would be best on Wednesday versus Friday. Mm -hmm. I get well, Lee's I mean, point. Could, I think I think it requires action. We could say the action is just to let administration. Okay. Decide. I think we have to give 
give them direction if we want face-to-face -face or hybrid and then let them go from there, correct? That's definitely an option you have, yep. But then do we need action to go back if we wanted, like if we say we take action that we wanna go hybrid, do we need action to go back full time if that would happen? It's all how you word the motion. You can say that administration can go back and forth as we see fit, or you can say, come to us each time you wanna make a change. Oh, okay. Um, okay, sorry. Well, for the curriculum committee, uh, just before we start the discussion about the hybrid, there were a couple of things that came out of it. One was some of the uh, teachers in the younger grade uh, could benefit from having an extra assistant hired. Uh, the way things are structured this year, keeping in, all the kids in cohorts requires a lot more supervision. You, you can't just put them all in a group and send them to one place and another place. So all the increased supervision is having to be done by the teachers themselves uh, instead of one person maybe being able to watch a wing, it takes one person to watch each class. And so if something that came out of that committee meeting was the idea that uh, hiring an extra assistant for supervisory purposes would be beneficial. Uh, Lori and I talked about it. We're very much in favor of thinking it's a good idea. Uh, other people that were at the committee meeting could uh, discuss that as well. Another thing that came up at that was a smaller thing, but uh, kids in the younger grades get snacks every afternoon when before they get on the bus. The new schedule that we have for busing is keeping kids on the bus a lot longer. It's keeping kids after school a little bit longer. We're doing double bus routes to reduce the number of kids. So the teachers all give the kids a snack at the end of the day to hold them over till they get home. A lot of the kids bring their own snack and some don't. So the teachers have been buying things and giving to the ones that don't have it. Well, Connie Riley checked into it a little bit and the free lunch that we're giving out right now until December 31st also can come with a free snack at the end of the day. So we filled out some paperwork and between now and December 31st, kids will get a free lunch and a free snack at the end of the day. So that will kind of take care of itself at least until then. And then the, that was the, fourth, the last thing that was on the list for me to talk about here from the committee report was the idea of we talked about hybrid at the high school for 912 and for Dems, what we talked about was the need, as Lori talked about, extra time for the teacher due to having kids in different uh, places, in person and virtual. So the possibility of going to school four days, maybe Monday through Thursday, and then on Friday, instead of it being a half day, have it be no school and the teachers have the whole day for preparing the virtual and the regular lessons for the next week and the training time that they already have now in the afternoon. And collaboration time too, time to get together and meet because that's another thing that they're kind of struggling with having that time to get together. Is that for both schools, Kale? The idea was hybrid for 912 and then four days in person full time and Dems and then Fridays off instead of Friday being a half day. Okay. But you would go, you'd, you would still do five days hybrid at the high school or just still go four days? Uh, high school would be, it sounds like Monday and Tuesday, one group, Wednesday and Thursday, the second group, and Friday, uh, either half a day virtual and half a day like it is now, or maybe a full day off for the teachers to prepare. That's what we were talking about with having administration talk to their staff about what they would like or not like or what would be best and why. Yeah. But I really still go back to, I think it needs to be the same day, you know, either Wednesday or Friday. I just, I just don't see how we can put that on families. But even when Dems was closed and the high school was still open, there was a lot of people scrambling because they depend on a high schooler for kids at home, you know? They, well, do you think it would matter at our building if we had it, if we did it on Wednesday as well? No, that's for the teachers, it would make no difference. They had one day to prepare. It wouldn't matter what it was. I'm thinking for the families that are used to Fridays now being a half day, it would be an easier transition to Fridays being a full day. I'm just speculating. I don't know why Friday. I think I agree. I don't disagree with that at all. I just, 
part of that. The too, cleaning. We had that. We had the Redbird after school program, but we haven't had that. Right. The Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, we don't have issues with keeping up the cleaning now, right? We're everything's gone well. So, if that's not the driving factor to having that fifth day without kids in the building, then I would say let's let's make that Friday. Um, because that will be easier, I think, for most families. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking as a grandparent, <laughs> at least John and I have an easier time if we have to pick up the kids on Friday because his plant closes at 2.30. You know, they run different shifts, so they're done on 2 at 2.30 on Fridays. And... Uh, I don't know how many other people are like that, but anyway, Friday seems to work good for this family. I guess one of the questions I would have, and that would be an infection control issue, and it would mainly have to do with the high school as far as um, if you're having the two cohorts coming in, let's say you did Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday, and I'm just thinking out loud, if you had an issue where the first cohort that Monday, Tuesday, um, cohort they had a let's say we had a COVID outbreak and then you're bringing those kids in um, that that following whatever it would be Wednesday or th the Wednesday so if you let's say you had Tuesday Wednesday you just don't have that time in between to clean is that would that does Lee see that being an issue where you know can you as far as that between that switch over between those two cohorts with that Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday if what you guys really want and what we think we really want is a day to clean, I think this point is kind of where I'm getting at is Wednesday will be your best bet as far as cleaning. Like I said, I'm only looking at it from a cleaning point now, correct me on that. But if you yeah. have a positive case on Tuesday, that'd be really easy to stop the second group from coming in and then we can do a, a, a deeper clean. But like I said, no matter what you do, the building's getting cleaned every night and the cleaners are doing a phenomenal yeah. job. So it's going to get clean. It just that extra day in between the groups would give us that opportunity to do a little extra and go above and beyond. Yeah, and that's like where I struggle because I do think for our staff, having Wednesday to prepare for maybe that next group or to get caught up from the first group before the next group comes in. Like I, I, I foresee that Wednesday is probably a really good day for everybody except a parent. And that's where I struggle, but yet. Maybe parents would be able to figure it out just knowing that, hey, this is gonna help keep our kids in the building too. So, um, you know, I. If that's our way to prevent a mass closing, then maybe that's what we do. Yeah. So was there any consideration um, to give to hybrid at K-8 or at any level other than high school? We talked about it a little bit, and I actually, before school started, kind of wondered if we were going to go down this route, so I did already kind of go through and divide the classes up. Um, I think we have, we have had a lot of technology issues this week. Um, I just, I get nervous about kids learning from home when they're younger, um, you know, and I worry about the little kids and where they're going to be and who they're going to be with. I just, but again, I can do whatever we can we can make it work. But I don't know the be the best one for those kids. I feel like at the dam building we can keep pods versus the high school, everybody's mixing, you know. Are there some ages at dams that could handle it and benefit? I'm sure, but I do worry about the same thing that Lori said that. I feel better with the way the Dems can operate. You know, it's just not realistic for the high school to operate that way. But I also, I don't feel comfortable making a decision on what day um, without the input of all of the staff. Because, I mean, I think it was pretty clear from even the curriculum or the climate meeting, excuse me, that even on that day, like if it, if we went to a full day of um, no kids in the buildings and the teachers were either teaching some virtually that day or maybe um, not. I still see support staff being in the building. Even I think we, 
I think it was very clear that they could probably, Lee or whoever, could find some two or three hours for the lunch workers if they wanted to still come in for a couple hours. Like, there's a lot of people that could use some extra help, <laughs> whether it's preparing for kids that maybe have gone virtual on quarantine or, you know, running coffees or whatever it is. Um, I've had uh, support staff doing Zoom meetings with kids all day long. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that we're pulling and using every resource, whether they're in the building or not. I don't know. Aaron, does the high school still have RTI? Because you don't, right? We put that on there. Yeah. No, we do not have it right now. We just kind of have an extended homeroom. Yeah. at this time because we haven't map test or anything yet sure so that might be something on that day too that could be worked on if we thought about hybrid at my building my thought would be to do similar to what Aaron's doing and i have the classes divided in half and half monday tuesday and the other half thursday friday i guess my preference though would probably be to do the four days and have a day just for teachers to <clears throat> Did we already get or we're anticipating a waiver for minutes and days? Not it, yet, right? It's wait. guaranteed that it'll be approved once we request it, but we have to meet certain criteria to request it first, which now we have, so. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we need to decide what action we want to take tonight, if any, and if we're comfortable saying administration, you put together a plan and we give you the authority to make the change when you see fit, we can. If we want to Are you okay more with that? specific, we can. Are you okay with that? Letting administration, Teresa? Yeah. Are you guys online okay with that? Letting administration decide when and what? Yep, and I don't think it matters really yep. which day they clean. If they clean Wednesday or they clean Friday. If they clean on a Friday, it just gives it that much more for all the disinfectants to work too. So I don't think there's an advantage either way. Okay. Yeah, and, and I have a no problem. I guess I just want to say if I have my opinion or not necessarily opinion, but preference for the high school coming back until our numbers are a little bit better in the state. I would like to see us come back hybrid at least initially until we can get uh, a better, the state as a whole can get a better grasp of what's going on and how they do the hybrid. That, that's, I would totally be comfortable with the administration deciding how they want to do that. Well, I'll make a motion to let administration put together a, um, a hybrid plan um, for the high school. Well, I don't, I don't want to say that. How about, hey, Bob? At their about, discretion. Yep. Go, a, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, how about a motion for administration to decide whether the building is open or hybrid? And, or no, that one. Administration to decide what learning style is in their building and when. Does that work? Learning style, or is there a different word? Because I don't want yep, to say those. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. something like you know, give the administration the authority to transition to a hybrid uh, plan that they've devised, and I assume to transition back, so they don't need board approval to go in or go out. I'll second your motion. Is that my motion? <laughs> <laughs> Whose motion is it right now? <laughs> okay, I'll make that motion. I think it's Aaron's. <laughs> Are we kind of looking at four days of instruction and one day for teacher prep and cleaning? I'm fine with that as long as that's what the staff wants. Yeah. And whenever possible, we go back to in school schooling. And if it's just yeah. the high school for a while or it's K-12 for a while or it's just five, eight for a while, I don't care. Whatever, I mean, it's all gonna change. It's never going to be the same. So somebody's going to be inconvenienced, right? One way or the other. So right. Okay. So motion by Wolf, second by Reitling. Yep. Everybody understand what we're voting on? Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Is that, uh, is that uh, you're voting to approve? There's a delay there. Can you hear me, Bob? I think he's he looks like he's froze up, Aaron. I, I think we lost What's it. What's that, Aaron? Oh, I approve. I approve your motion. Okay, so that, that passed unanimously. <laughs> Thank you on the first version. <laughs> okay, so now. Item 11, discussion and action regarding support staff compensation compensation during virtual work. While we're virtual for this two weeks, a lot of the support staff, probably most, are continuing to do their normal job. Let's say that you're a special ed aide who, who used to work with kids who need some extra help, and that's what you usually do in person. Now you're doing the same thing, you're just doing it virtually through Zoom. So for most people, nothing's changing. There are a few support staff people primarily would be in the areas of custodial and food service who are still needed during the closure but are working fewer hours than what they're used to just take the night cleaners for example they usually have all the kids and everything to clean up after now they still have to clean because there were teachers and there were people in the building a few people using the bathrooms but it's not as intense as it was because the desks weren't used and things so with no kids in the building so rather than their four hour normal shift, they might be down to an hour and a half or something. Same thing with food service. They're needed and they're working, but maybe reduced hours. The question is, can we have permission to pay those people their normal schedule during the closure, being that their reduced hours were nothing of their own making and they were willing to be here? I'll make a motion to approve all support staff being paid at their normal hours. What? <laughs> All supports have to be paid at their normal hours. I'll second it. Okay, there's a motion by Hermanson, second by Reichling to continue to pay support staff at their normal hours uh, during uh, virtual schooling. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. I'll abstain. With the noted abstention. Sorry, lost my agenda here. Item drone. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion and action regarding start college now applications. This is where high school kids who have exhausted all the opportunities in a certain area in the high school can go to a, the college system if it's close by and, and take advantage of opportunities there. And we have two students requesting to do that here. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Schilling, second by Reikling to approve those applications. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. Item 13, discussion and action regarding resignation. 13A, Brittany Chapel is requesting to resign as a certified nursing assistant at the high school. Motion to approve. Motion by Jillian, second by Reikling to approve that resignation. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Item 13B, Mike Hopkins is requesting to resign as a National Honor Society advisor. Motion to approve and thank him for all the efforts and everything he put in through the years. Second. Motion by Shillian, second by Zubabiller to approve that uh, resignation with their thanks for your service. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Item 14, discussion and action regarding traveling restrictions for extracurricular activities. Yeah, I put this on here because at the beginning of the year, we discussed 
uh, the virus and athletics and everything. And, and it was, I don't think it was an actual action item that the board approved, but I know I remember some discussion of trying not to go too far away from home to play games. Well, then last week, our football opponent canceled at the last minute. We looked around and the closest opponent we could find was two and a half hours away. So I was asked, can we make that trip and play them? And I said, yes, tried to balance everything and make a wise decision. I don't know if it's right or not, but I thought I wanted to put it on here just to ask if we would have had time to have a meeting and talk about this, what would you have thought of that? And moving forward, do you want to have any travel restrictions of a certain mile radius or something for me to keep in mind when I'm making decisions like this? Well, if we would have had a meeting last week, I would have been like, oh, that's a long ways to go. And I took a lot of heat for it. I'm sure everybody got phone calls and text messages. However, the board voted the other night to allow a meet in Grant County last night, which is the fifth ranked per capita in the nation for highest COVID percentages, far and away from Toma. So is that a long ways during this situation? Probably, but the harsh reality is that 20 miles away was a lot more medically challenged area as far as percentage of COVID positive cases. So it's tough to, you know, if you're looking out for the health of your athletes, I don't know where you draw that line. Just my opinion. I don't think I don't think you can necessarily put a mile radius on on where you're going to go. I think initially I brought it up about you know hey I don't want to chase a game all the way up to Osseo Fairchild. Um, that's a lot of time on the bus. But I think what you really need to look at is the circumstances as to where you may be going. I or example the you know what are the infection rates in the county you're going? What are the infection rates in the actual school district you're playing? I think those all need to come into a factor, not just necessarily how far it is from Darlington, because I think Colleen brings up a good point. You know, our, our neighbor next door has, is uh, not doing well. Um, and, you know, if we did travel to a county that happened to have a little better numbers, I said our, probably our biggest risk would be ourselves in the sense where it's just longer time for us on a bus. Um, so that's my opinion. Well, we were going to take two buses to that game since it's so far and spread out, everybody spread out as much as possible. But so look, well, I've got the motion, but look more at infection rates. Consider the distance, but look more at infection rates. That would be my opinion. I think you got to look at, you know, the county and the school district itself as far as what their infection rates are. Just make a decision. To make the decision. You're yeah. not going to make people happy either way. So. <laughs> And I think our AD has a pretty good grasp of our community and how far they would be willing to travel, right? Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you right now that it's it's yeah. be a more difficult situation with football than it will be in say the winter time because everyone's going to be playing in the winter. It'll be easier to find local games, but we tried a handful of local teams and they turned us down. They chose not to play rather than play us for various reasons. So it got down to crunch time and we were, you know, looking to give our kids an opportunity to play and, and Toma was that, that place. So uh, I, I think going forward, and like I said, in the winter season especially, it won't be as big a concern because everybody right now is scheduled to be playing basketball and, and things like that will be easier to find these games on short notice. But when you're talking football, it's – it's pretty hard. You know, not gonna lie to you, I called, I called probably half a dozen schools. Uh, some of them didn't even bother calling me back. Uh, some called me back and told me exactly why they weren't playing us. So uh, if the purpose is to get the kids an opportunity to play. In it's a just gonna have to. What's that? I think he was, he just needed it. Safe as you can and give them as many opportunities as you can. Yeah, so I would say going forward, you know, we'll do our best to obviously look and make sure we're not putting our kids into a excessive situation. Um, but I will say putting a mile marker on it might make it real difficult 
you know. I would leave it up to you too, Reich, as far as you and Aaron and and Kale, as far as your discretion as to far as school size too. You know, I know there was some concern there. I did feel a couple calls about, hey, we're going up to play a division. Um, you know, I don't know what division are they, division two, you know, size wise. I, I, it's not really that big of an impact in basketball, but in football, um, you know, that can, that can be a, an issue too. So I guess I would leave that up to your guys' discretion too, whether or not you think it's, it's safe for a, you know, a small school like us to go and compete against a, a, a division or a, you know, an upper divisional school. I would trust you. All right, everybody comfortable moving on? Yep. Item 15 is discussion and action regarding creating a full-time substitute position. We talked about this about a year ago of the possibility of hiring a sub full-time so that we had somebody guaranteed every day because in the entire district, most days at some level, someplace, you need at least one sub. And I think the answer that we got was generally the board was in favor of it, but let's wait till we had a, either a, a real a more specific need or we targeted a person that we felt individually would be really good. And I, we have a couple of people in mind that would be good. I think the bigger reason right now is there's never in history been more of a time where we needed a full-time sub than now. Uh, there was a time, but even before the closure where we had uh, five, six staff people quarantined. And, you know, that's probably going to continue for the rest of the year. So uh, we'd like to request that we take advantage of that uh, opportunity idea we were thinking of last year. Uh, we wouldn't just want to go with one of the people that we have in mind. We would post it. We'd see what we get for applicants, consider all of them. But uh, I think this would be the ideal time to go with one of those people. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to use CARES? I'll make a motion to create a full-time substitute position. Yes, the CARES money is gone though, but there's that gear money, that second round that could be used for that, yeah. Honestly, if we didn't use that for that, we've spent enough money on other stuff that we could justify for getting reimbursed already from that. It's not gonna be a problem finding things to, to turn into them to claim to get that money back already. <clears throat> but yes, that would qualify for that. Okay. I'll second that motion. All right, got a motion by Hermanson, second by Reichling to approve uh, creating a full-time substitute position opposed for that. Do you guys want to just clarify that we don't need to, we already created the position, we just need to fill it. Right, post Yeah, basically, we're just saying go ahead and post. Yeah, so I don't know if Bob wants to change his motion. We're not actually creating the position, we're just filling the- Well, go, well, go ahead and post. Yeah, just make a motion to go ahead and post it. Second. Yep, that's, yep. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Item 16, discussion and action regarding traveling expenses for volunteer coaches. I don't know, Pat, you want to take over on this one? Sure. Um, it's always been the policy that when our student athletes or our coaches an overnight event for a state meet or something like that, that's, uh, we reimburse them $5 per meal for travel. And uh, for as long as I've been coaching, we've always said that volunteer coaches aren't eligible for that because it's viewed as a form of compensation. I gotta be honest, I would love to see us change that um, because I don't really feel like it's that big a compensation. I mean, usually you get 15 bucks or 20 bucks if you go to like state track or something like that. Uh, I think it's more of just a, a nod to thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I don't really look at it as compensation because if you get a whole season worth of coaching for free, and all you do is buy them a couple of meals. I don't think people are signing up for that. So um, I would like to see us, you know, as a district say that it will be okay 
to include uh, volunteer coaches in those types of compensations, if you will, or those types of events. Mm -hmm. oh. I have one here for because I only got five dollars a meal until this came up. I would assume policy would need to meet on that, but I definitely think that's well under any per diem any business has right now. So if somebody wants to recommend policy meeting to review that, yeah, I don't think that's on the line. Just stick to the dollar menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that I should have looked up and I didn't, but I just remembered this. I think I talked to Aaron about it. When a staff member is a volunteer, they by rule have to take a personal day to go to the state meet of that group they coach. And I think that should be looked at too. Because our coaches can go to the state meet without using time off. But our volunteer staff members can't. They also have to take personal days to attend uh, any clinics that they go to, whereas paid staff are granted that day. Again, I, we know we're getting into a little bit more, uh, but you know, I know from a coaching standpoint, from an AD standpoint, uh, trying to get young people involved in coaching and getting them that education. You know, very seldom do you want to bring in a 22 year old, give them a paid position. You know, you want to give them some time to to get going, and things like the clinics uh, really do make a big difference. Uh, but it's tough again when you're starting out and you say, well, you only have a few days here and you got to burn one of them to go get this education. So there's several things. I mean, I, I look at with our volunteers that I think uh, are maybe we're good at one point, but now for something we definitely should re examine if we want to honestly get people involved in these extracurriculars. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd have to look at policy if those things are actually in policy or if that's just procedure and how things have always been done. Um, yeah, so I, I wasn't looking for action on this tonight. I guess it was more just to uh, bring it to the board's attention so that, you know, we can maybe start to look at this. And again, if it's policy versus procedure, I don't know. Um, but something that we can look at moving forward. I guess is it's not in policy, but. It's in writing, but yeah, it could be just procedure. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and that's where it is. So. It's probably in the coach's handbook. I do not know. I will look it up. It's sure. not in the coach's handbook. It's not? Nope. Went through that baby with a fine tooth comb this summer. It's probably nowhere then, but I will look. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really didn't see it in writing somewhere. Yeah, so that's something we should okay. have on a future agenda, maybe. But yeah. for tonight, traveling expenses is there. Um, do you want action on it? Do you want action on it? <laughs> um, okay. Yes. So uh, I'll make, I'll make a motion. motion. Okay, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the travel expenses. Volunteer coaches. Second. Take hey, Joe. Motion by Zubiller, second by Reichling to approve allowing traveling expenses or reimbursing traveling expenses for volunteer coaches. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any Passes. Thank you. Item 17, Superintendent, Principals, Activities Director, and Building and Grounds Reports. Yeah. Uh, two things. Number one, our third Friday count in September is over. That's a big day. All of our funding is based on how many kids we have in the building that third Friday. Uh, we were up five, which doesn't sound like a lot, but anytime you're up, it's good. But last year, we were up 39. And the way that the, the uh, finances work is that they average your last three years of enrollment and base your revenue off that. So last year, if we were up 39, and now that even if we just would have stayed the same for two more years and made that our three year average, that would have been good. But now the fact that we're still going up even after that huge jump last year, that's very good news. Uh, second thing, more on the minor side, if you see a charge when you're going through the, the books for 2300 for a, 
uh, heater in the cafeteria, a booster heater in the cafeteria, the big dishwasher that they use, the heater broke. It's not something that we really could wait on. We had to had to have it. It uh, water. There's all these rules. Water's got to be up to a certain temperature for cleaning purposes in the cafeteria. So we already got that fixed. All right. Thanks, Kale. Aaron. Uh, not a lot. I think everybody kind of knows. Uh, the big news was going virtual. Um, other than that, we'll continue to work on uh, a hybrid setting. Uh, looking at coming back in the 19th and that uh, with some form of hybrid with that. But um, other than that, I think we just got the, the few events coming up here over the next few weeks. And that's about all I got. Thanks, Aaron. All right. Um, prior to us closing, we had our picture day with our new company. We did it with Johnston's this year, and it went very, very well, very smooth. It was a good day, so I'm hoping we can continue with that. Um, I have had opportunities in the last two weeks to sit in on many of the virtual classes. I think I sat on four today, and. I just am so proud of the teachers there. They have worked so hard and done such an amazing job. I'm proud of the kids because, you know, last year we had some difficulty getting kids on and this year, a lot of kids are getting on and doing a great job and, and participating. Um, we have this, we had some technology issues and I don't know if it's just internet issues with the kids. Um, so that's something I think we need to kind of look at and think about. But overall, I'm just really happy with how things are going. So I'm proud of them, and I want to make sure that we thank them for the work that they put in. And support staff, too. They're working very hard as well. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Okay. Uh, we got a few events coming up. Um, we're going to, as Gail said, we're going to play basketball and volleyball uh, tomorrow night. Uh, we are set to host the sectional cross country meet this year on October 23rd at five o'clock. They're doing it differently this year. Uh, they're doing subsectionals and then sectionals, and they're doing more of them to limit how many people. Uh, so it would be 38 girl runners and 38 uh, boy runners. So we're scheduled to, uh, to do that. Middle school ADs met today to discuss how to move ahead with uh, boys basketball at the middle school level. Uh, some of the things they came up with, they're looking at moving the start date from October 18th to November 2nd. Uh, only two practices a week, only one game a week. Um, they are going to have players wear masks. Um, and then also they voted for they did not want to have spectators. Um, because of the size of most of these gyms, it's really a, an issue to try and get anybody in there. So one thing I'm looking at is obviously if we're not going to have any spectators, um, you know, we're going to have to look at uh, live streaming capability in this building as well. We already have it in the high school. So I'm kind of looking into that to uh, make sure that obviously parents, grandparents, everybody can see what they what they need to see. The season would end in December 21st. So it'd be shifted a little bit, but still a relatively short season. Um, just again, trying to get the kids a chance to compete. Uh, we did have a meeting today with the ADs uh, in the SWAL. Uh, one thing that we're all looking at is changing how our spectator limits are figured out. Uh, we're looking at going to more of a immediate family only. Uh, what we're finding is that we're giving out tickets and those tickets are going to just anyone and everyone. Um, and so to limit exposure, we're looking at only people that live in the household with the, uh, with the athlete would be allowed to attend the game. Uh, some schools obviously would still have to limit it even more than that, but that's one thing looking at the winter season that we're gonna be pushing towards is, and this fall season's kind of been a learning process as to what works and what doesn't, so. That's all I got. Oh, thanks, Pat. Lee? Um, <laughs> I wanna take a minute to just um, remind you guys, or remind to tell you guys, how hard the cleaners and custodial staff have been working since the start of school. 
um, what they've been doing and how, um, how clean things have looked um, exceeded my expectations. Um, and uh, I guess for the most part, when I approached them before school started, let them know all the extra cleaning they're going to have. And you know, my expectations as well as administration's expectations. Wasn't a single person that complained or said, this is dumb or this is silly, why are we doing this? Everybody said, sure, let's do it. Um, so the amount of uh, you know extra plexiglass and extra disinfectant and some of the extra steps we're taking with the cleaners and custodial stuff, as well as you know, they're really working hard. And hearing Julie say Monday night that there's no sign of community spread inside the school goes to show that, I mean, and it's not just cleaners, custodians, I understand staff, teachers, aides, um, other staff are, are doing their part, but what the cleaners are doing is working. And that, that uh, makes me feel good. And like I, one of the board members said on Monday night, you know, nobody thought we'd make it this long and we did. So that's a, that's a team effort on the staff, um, you know, throughout the building. So either way, very impressed with what they've done so far. <clears throat> other than that, a couple things during quarantine, we've been doing some extra cleaning, um, some things we haven't got to, so a couple things we didn't finish for the summer. We did add some bottle fillers in the Dems building. I put those in yesterday. I got a couple to put in at the high school tomorrow, allow the kids easier access to fill up their water bottles. And uh, we we'll don't have to travel so far to do that. And then uh, we're putting up a lot of the whiteboard material. The teachers like that. We put that over the chalkboards, turns the chalkboard into a whiteboard. Um, kind of a preferable thing for staff. But other than that, uh, just uh, doing our best to keep the building open. If we could go, I forgot something. When we were on the climate committee report, I mentioned that it came up to hire an aide. We never really got to have any action on that or decide anything on that. Oh, oh. I thought the action. I mean, I don't. We'll ask if you bring us a candidate. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. You posted it already. Right. Yeah. But I didn't want to interview and kind of offer it to anybody unless I thought we were going to first. Uh, that oh, I thought we did that. <laughs> I can make a motion. Um, motion to approve a full time, right? Full time? 30 hours. Uh, part, uh, part time and temporary, just this okay. year and just 30 hours. Okay. Um, motion to approve a part time and temporary aid position for the 2021 school year. Thank you. A motion by Reichling. Is there a second? Second. Second by Schilling. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And that brings us to motion to adjourn. Item 18, which is adjournment. Motion by Reichling. Second. By Rickers. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. We're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.